Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence, for Just Ask. Today we have Kathy Crosby of the Goodwill Industry of Greater Detroit. Hurry back and join us. Every year, Goodwill Industries helps people discover a new day of the week. Payday. We provide job training for people with disabilities and other special needs so they can get jobs, earn paychecks, and lead independent lives. Support Goodwill Industries. Our business works so people can. Hi. Hi, and welcome back to the show. I'm Marsha Florence with Just Dance. Today we have Kathy Crosby, Vice President of Human Services for the Goodwill Industry of Greater Detroit. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Marsha. Thank you for coming to the show. Oh, I'm delighted. Thanks a lot. Good. Kathy, we normally open up with uh, some general questions to our guests. And the one I want to start off with you is, can you give us a brief history of the Goodwill Industry? Uh, Goodwill Industries International is our parent organization. And the original Goodwill Industries was founded by Edgar Helms. He was affiliated with the Methodist Church in Boston and really felt a need to provide real work opportunities and avenues for people with disabilities. The idea became so successful that it spread across the country and in 1921 Goodwill Industries of Greater Detroit was founded. We've been here in this community providing services to the disadvantaged and disabled for 76 years. Wonderful. Now basically the mission um, of the Goodwill Industry is what? Our mission is a vocational services mission. Uh, philosophically we share a common bond with all of the Goodwills. There's 183 in the country, and all of us are working towards a vocational rehabilitation that allows people to return to gainful employment. In our case, we broaden that statement to include the disadvantaged as well as the disabled, and we want them to improve their independence and enter the community through gainful employment. Okay. Now, do you work closely with a lot of different organizations, companies, or... Oh, networks. absolutely. Uh, we're very, very fortunate. In many ways, the history of Goodwill in Greater Detroit has been made possible by the coalition of referral sources that bring people to us so that we can help them. And out of that comes a strong network of funding opportunities and resources to support the service that we deliver. Um, we're an integrated organization ourselves because we also have contracts to raise money as well as grants for dollars and together we can assure that regardless of the economic trends we can provide services to the community. That's great. Now when you say vocational services, does the vocational services consist of education or um, on-the-job training? Under what status is vocational services? Uh, vocational services, of course, was originally defined by the Voc Rehab Ad and, and the national law that applies to rehabilitation for all persons that are eligible in the country. But in the common vernacular and what we're talking about today, it's a really broad statement of services that range anywhere from evaluation and what people need to the design of an individual plan based on training desires and needs, education desires and needs, support services. We do job placement and development, follow along, job coaching, follow up to placement, anything it takes for someone to move into the community and do the work they want to do. Okay, now is there a particular population of persons with disabilities that you work with? or No, I would say that our services now really spread broadly through the community. Our referral sources include Michigan Rehab Service, which of course serves a wide variety of persons, the mentally ill, the developmentally disabled, the physically challenged, the hearing and visually impaired, all come to us from Michigan Rehab. Uh, we do business with the Commission for the Blind. We also have a contract in Wayne County in the city of Detroit to serve the mentally ill population. We have a clubhouse in South Oakland County for adult mentally ill persons. We serve the developmentally disabled. We have contracts in Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County to serve work first participants mm -hmm. through the Family Independence Agency. And we're really lucky because in Oakland County we have one of the No Wrong Door Centers that's emerging. And there we have a complete coalition of funding sources and services to people under one roof. So we're really proud of that. Mm, that's a wide range of population to be served also. Yes, it is. Very much. Do you all consider um, 
individuals that come to you for service? Are they customers, clients? What What do you? If I had my my way, they'd just be people. Okay. I think okay. ultimately we should work towards people come to us for service, but we really try hard to call our customers by that name mm -hmm. so that we're trying to meet their need and can handle those needs with the same quality customer care that any business would. Is there an age criteria for services? Basically we're an adult service organization. Mm -hmm. 16 and over is mm -hmm. the population we serve. Um, we're trying very hard to identify particularly special needs persons earlier through school to work transition programs that we're initiating with the public schools, knowing that a lot of special ed students will benefit from early identification and transition employment services so that it's easier for them to identify with the real world of work. Okay, okay. So basically if you have a, say, a youth uh, in, in high school or junior high, the system or the program can follow that youth through its uh, transition through education? Absolutely. But okay. as I said, we tend to focus on the 16 and over. Uh, okay. 14 and 15 year olds, if persons come to us in that age group, we really try to redirect them back into the educational mm -hmm. system and keep them focused on getting the basic skills they need for employment. But oftentimes um, we try to provide summer youth opportunities in terms of work experience for the younger students so that they have some idea of the opportunities that are there for them. Okay. And in particular, are there any particular funding sources that assist you all in, in maintaining? Our funding matrix is probably one of the things I'm most proud of. Um, we have contracts for services that amount to over four million dollars and come to us from Michigan Rehab Services in three counties, the Department of Community Health via Detroit, Wayne County, and Oakland counties. We have JTPA funds, Work First funds, mm -hmm. Michigan Department of Correction funds, and on top of all that are lucky enough to have a projects with industry grant through the federal government for the empowerment zone in the city of Detroit. So we're very fortunate. But what really I think keeps us stable is our internal funding source because Goodwill Industries of Greater Detroit has its own private foundation and that foundation works really hard to raise money mm -hmm. just to support us and when the grants fall short that money is there for us and funds what we call a job ships program, a mm -hmm. special funding opportunity. Our industrial contracts generate profits that come back to support vocational services and then of course we have our six retail stores and they're a profit okay. center as well as a training opportunity as well. When people give to Goodwill they can feel good about the mm -hmm. fact that the dollars from the sale of those used goods will support the training and rehab organization that Goodwill okay. is part of. So how does um, one come in contact with the, with the is it agency? Where are you? Yes. Okay. Well, we're a nonprofit corporation, but okay. we refer to ourselves as an agency. Okay. How does one come in contact with the agency? You can come to us just through the door. That's fine. We okay. do not require a referral for services, mm -hmm. but a lot of our customers do come to us on referrals from one of the mental health agencies or probably through Michigan Rehab Services, the Detroit Commission for the Blind, or any organization that's aware of the service menu that we have and believes that one of their customers would benefit from seeing us. Okay. Is it possible, Kathy, we can get the phone number from you? Um, sure. Calling the corporate headquarters at 313-964-3900 is the best way to find out which site we have is closest to a home and okay. which is the easiest way into our service. Okay. Now, is each site set up differently for different types of services or basically if you're looking for something in particular with someone at that site direct you to the one that's closest to you or direct you to the one that has this particular service you're looking for? In some cases, there are specialized services available in our system. The best example is the clubhouse in Oak Park. Uh, that population is an adult mentally ill population and they do design their own program. It's driven by the customers on a daily basis. They're answering the phone, taking care of the facility, transitioning to employment. They're in control of that program and will be moving into the community and moving into independence knowing they mm -hmm. always have the clubhouse to come back to for support. On the other hand, if vocational placement services are what's needed, we have sites throughout the Tri-County area and mm -hmm. people will be referred to that convenient site closest to them. Okay, that, that's really nice. It sounds very supportive 
very supportive because in, in general um, when a person is looking for services not necessarily would it be somewhere close by but they can be referred to another branch office or sure. service center okay. unfortunately I think one of the greatest barriers to some customers getting to the service they need is the transportation problem in mm -hmm. southeastern Michigan. Mm -hmm. We try very hard to facilitate transportation for our customers, but particularly in rural and suburban areas, that mm -hmm. becomes a trick in and of itself because the bus lines may not right. be there and mm -hmm. transportation becomes right. difficult. Now, is staffing uh, made up of a group of what of uh, social workers, or how is staffing? Baines, mainly in your um, offices. Our staffing pattern has evolved through community needs. We have occupational therapists at some of our sites. We have evaluators and counselors, uh, licensed vocational counselors at all of our placement sites. We have case managers and we have a variety of um, paraprofessionals known as vocational technicians, mm -hmm. placement specialists, employment and training specialists, job coaches to meet the customer needs wherever the community is located. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a good makeup. Now, is any of your um, facilities 24 hour services or is there 24 no. hours hotline or anything? The main number at the corporate office mm -hmm. that I gave you before, the 313 964 3900, has um, a 24-hour answering service and if you need to leave a message and have someone get back to you you can utilize that number and you will hear from someone okay okay and now what office are you located in I'm at corporate headquarters okay. <laughs> okay. and uh, at that facility we have approximately 250 customers coming to us on a daily basis for service mm -hmm. we have a work activity center and an operations department that uh, is a tier one and tier two supplier to all of the big three okay. besides some of the other smaller contracts that we have but this is Detroit and auto contracts count right. that's what we do right <laughs> and uh, we're about to have our QS 9000 certification in place so we can keep doing that okay. we're actually very lucky we just got our second gold pentastar from Chrysler for quality this year nice. um, we're General Motors one of their North American suppliers of the year this year for quality okay. and we've even earned the Ford's Q1 award in the past so we continue to demonstrate that the disabled can do mm -hmm. quality work mm -hmm. for the auto industry. It's very much important. Uh, is there any um, close association with uh, ADA? Absolutely. Um, myself, I've participated in a great deal of training, particularly through Pat Cannon's office in Lansing with the handicappers, and we try to facilitate the accessibility for all persons into the community employment. Our placement specialists know they have to advocate for our persons and help employers identify the best way to accommodate the disability that that person brings to the workplace. We want to open as many doors as we can. That's really nice. Yes. Well, Kathy, let's go to a commercial break here okay. and get one of our public service announcements some credit here. We'll be right back. Thank you. In a life-threatening emergency, you should know what to do. Say a loved one exhibits unusual symptoms. The first thing to do... Clear! No. The first thing to do is pick up. Pick up the phone and dial your local emergency number. Call 911 first. Right. How about mouth to mouth? I don't think so. Hmm. To learn more about life-saving techniques, contact your Red Cross. Hi, and welcome back to the second half of the show. We have Kathy Crosby of the Goodwill Industry in Greater Detroit, and we were going over the history of the Goodwill Industry as well as the mission. Uh, Kathy, also I want to know, what are the future plans or the direction of the Goodwill Industry? Well, Goodwill Industries of Greater Detroit has made a really strong commitment to the city of Detroit as well as the entire southeastern Michigan area. So right now, we're in the process of completing a 20,000 square foot addition to our building at Trumbull and Grand River in Detroit. We know that will allow us to expand our plan operations and deliver more services to more people in the city of Detroit. We're also um, developing a career center at that site so that persons can walk in the door and access any service they need without having to go back through a referral loop. 
we're very fortunate that we already have strong partnerships in the city with so many agencies that mm -hmm. it will allow us to facilitate that and make it possible for persons to just walk through the door and know that whatever they need, we can help them identify where to get it and let them access it through our facility. Okay. So that's a very, very big piece to us, that we create that no wrong door, that seamless wow. service delivery in the city. Now, would that be a previous customer that may have received services beforehand and it's coming back? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we know that even though our best effort is there, sometimes people end up coming back through our system and getting that next little lift to maybe a higher level of employment, a better wage, mm -hmm. um, full-time employment instead of part-time employment. We never turn people away for that. Mm -hmm. um, I think additionally our long-range plans include broadening the support of our private dollars. We all know the tax base is going to uh, a road in terms of grant funding. We don't want to be totally reliant on mm -hmm. grant funds for program services. So we're trying hard to maximize the dollars we get from our foundation, our stores, our operations, and a wonderful group we have called the Junior Group. And uh, that's our volunteer fundraising arm of Goodwill. Okay. And the juniors do a lot to raise money to support our programs. Now, do you have any future uh, fundraising or events that may be coming up? I think that uh, the most important thing to note is that our juniors annually sponsor what I believe is the second oldest antique show in Michigan. Every year at the Michigan Fairgrounds on the weekend before Thanksgiving, they have a very well-respected juried antique show where dealers come from all over the country. And they also have a goodwill booth where they sell specialty items they've made all year and things that they've garnered out of estates and donations to our stores. They raise an incredible amount of money for us on that activity, and it's a wonderful event for anyone who wants to attend. Every year in the spring, they also have a golf classic for women hosted at one of the local uh, golf courses. And um, that's become another large event and a popular way for them to raise dollars to support Goodwill. Okay, so we missed the golfing already. Yeah, we've missed okay. the golf owning. Okay. But we'll make sure you know. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you. Now I wanted to ask you a question. I noticed we had um, the Goodwill Industry uh, Greater Detroit uh, annual report and I wanted to ask you a question about the report. Can you uh, give us a little brief history or what's the insight on the, the report? The annual report uh, every year gives people a nice overview about our accomplishments for the past mm -hmm. year, uh, some insight into where we're headed, where our programs and stores are located. We do mm -hmm. have six stores now um, in Redford, Madison Heights, Taylor, Waterford, Pontiac, and Roseville. Mm -hmm. And we have programs in Taylor, Mount Clements, Oak Park, Holly, Oxford, as well as the city of Detroit. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a guide to where things are, what things are, and all the good things we've accomplished in the past okay. year. Okay. And, you know, I always, I believe that people are on the assumption that Goodwill was just stores, that um, they only provide needed materials for uh, families in need or, mm -hmm. you know, when someone has too much of something, they send it to the Goodwill. That's and, right. And that's it. But you all have an umbrella of, of wonderful services that you provide. Oh, yes. And mm -hmm. the stores are an important part of our identity, mm -hmm. and they certainly are a good part of our identity because those dollars provide real opportunities for people. Mm -hmm. But we are kind of a well-kept secret sometimes, I yeah. think, and that the other pieces of our organization aren't as well known. Okay. <laughs> okay, they will be today. Okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that is true. Cause I would never, um, off the top of my head, recognize, you know, a, another service under Goodwill until today. And uh -huh. we greatly appreciate you coming on and letting us know. Um, because, like I said, we may go to the store, and, and I'm one for shopping for antique jewelry. So I may go to a store, you know, or a Goodwill outlet and something, and I'm like, oh, there's a nice piece of jewelry. Oh, yeah. But I would never think to go any further into the services. But mm -hmm. this way, it, you know, it gives another uh, level of um, encouragement to individuals who are seeking some type of assistance that they at least can call and find out if they qualify or if they're, um, is there a qualification? I should have asked you that. No. Is there any type of qualification requirements or something for an applicant? Absolutely not, okay. because uh, we are fortunate to have private funds. If you come to us and you don't qualify for any grant funding source, we're going to help you identify what it is you really need to succeed okay. and look where we have our private dollars available to support that service so we can still help you move to where you want to be with your vocational goals. 
Okay. Now, this booklet here, the Goodwill Industry International, Inc.? Yes, and that's okay. brand new. Uh, Fred Grandy is the CEO of Goodwill International, and mm. you may remember him as Gopher on the Love Boat, and okay. the former senator from Iowa, but now he's our CEO, okay. and he's been a very strong spokesperson for the mm. organization. And again, I think our stores and our mission for job placement is what all of us have in common and share. Okay. Yes. Now, is, is, do you have a uh, track record for, for job placement for persons with, with handicaps or disabilities? Is it a good track record developed already? I believe so. In 1996, we placed over 400 persons into community employment with mm -hmm. private employers. We have over 200 employers who have been receptive to hiring the disabled and disadvantaged from us, and we try very hard to work with those employers to identify what they need and support them as they support our customers moving into the community. Every year at our awards mm. banquet, we make sure we honor the employer of the year. And often mm. that's someone who's hired more than one person from us into their company and found themselves to be part of our team at that point in time as they support our endeavor. Okay. Now, do you check back a little later and see if that person is still employed there? or? We yeah. follow up for a year. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We stay with people okay. at least for a year. Uh, 30 days, 90 days, six months, and a year will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a quality staff, a quality assurance staff that does follow up uh, surveys and telephone contact with people to see if they were satisfied with our service and where they are in staying employed or meeting their own goals so that we know if we're succeeding instead okay. of just a number. That's great. That's really great. I was concerned about the fact that if we have a lot of um, disabled persons who may be homebound, does the Goodwill industry do anything for homebound um, disabled persons? Can you service them from their home? In other words, uh, they're looking for some type of vocational service or um, job assistance, maybe something through the Internet where they can possibly use computers to work from home. Can you provide any type of assistance to a person like that? You know, we're just moving towards that. Um, again, I'm going to say we've been, we've been very fortunate. We've been able to access this past year a collaborative grant through mm -hmm. Michigan Rehab that's uh, provided us with um, computers, mm -hmm. um, a link between us, Lansing, Kalamazoo, and Muskegon, video conferencing equipment, and uh, actually a wide area network of software and learning opportunities for people. Our future plans include creating access through all of our stores to that information network, and I hope down the road exactly what you're talking about is we develop internet and intranet sites mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that people can at least access some of the interactive learning opportunities okay. from their home. Okay, so you're not on the internet yet, right? Well, we... You're online? You're right. Okay. Yeah, we're just getting there, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, we have the accessibility to computers, but not necessarily uh, are we all equipped to handle them. Exactly. So I'm not going to say that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I right. can find you so easily on the Internet. And we are just starting to train people to right. use that service. Uh, we have an Internet site with Goodwill International, and we belong to the Michigan Association of Rehab Organizations, who has an Internet site that includes okay. reference to us. Okay. But we aren't really to that point where people can interact mm -hmm. with our facility mm -hmm. on the Internet. Okay. Okay. In yeah. the event, do all are you all considered chapters or just because um, I wonder, do you all get together a certain time of year and you know, well, like a conference? They do. Yes, indeed. Uh, we're okay. definitely independent organizations, fiscally mm -hmm. independent and functioning in our own communities. But we do have two annual events where, at the international level, the goodwills come together, okay. and one is the Council of Ex Executives, and that's coming up. Uh, in the summer every year, and in the winter time, they get together as well for a conference that includes everyone from across the country. Wonderful. And you just yeah. share insight and information and resource materials and things? Yes, they do. They offer okay. a wide variety of training. Uh, we're, Goodwill International is very supportive. They have their own uh, catalog of training events throughout the country, mm -hmm. and it's provided economically to all of us who are members so that persons can pursue training in retail or federal standards from the Department of Labor, marketing their programs, whatever it is that will help us all be successful. So that comes out of that relationship with all the goodwills. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, it, can you just answer this for me, Kathy? In what areas of society would you like to see some changes made and if goodwill has any anything to do with it? I would say if goodwill's uh, mission were fully met, we'd put ourselves out of business. 
We know that if our workforce is fully prepared and if indeed the public is fully educated in accepting the abilities of people, they won't need to have goodwill anymore. Uh, we, our Vice President of Operations has a wonderful way of putting it. He always says it's the first automobile supplier he's ever worked for where his goal is to get rid of his best workers. And that's true. <laughs> the better people work for us, the more, the more we know we can place them into jobs in the community. If I had a dream for this area, of course, it would be to provide more public transportation, mm -hmm. more child care, mm -hmm. and more of the real infrastructure needed so that people who want to work can. We are frequently challenged not by the abilities of our customers, but by the inability of our neighborhoods mm -hmm. to meet their support needs. That's, that's well put, because you're so right. It seems as though uh, those who are interested in finding employment or continuing education, it may not be their lack of interest or, or self-esteem. Right. It could be transportation. It could be child care, yes. location, you know, things of that nature. And we find ourselves spinning our wheels saying, well, I want to do this, but I can't. And when someone said, well, why can't you? It's not based on the disability that you can't. It's based on the fact that you may not have uh, the adequate facilities to do so. And the, the family structures are so different today, we really need to make a society commitment, I think, to meet some of those needs. As we look around through the organization, oftentimes we're seeking, instead of training dollars, perhaps a scholarship for child care so that a handicapped mother can go to work knowing her children are safe in a good child care facility. Or maybe we're looking for bus vouchers to last the first 90 days. Mm -hmm. But it's those kind of supports in the community that make our job a greater challenge because they're just not there. Wonderful. Well, well hopefully with the uh, No Wrong Door uh, program being implemented through the system, it will close in, close out some of the gaps between, yes. you know, the services and hopefully um, more per persons with disabilities and handicaps and even our seniors can be placed. I noticed that there's agencies now that have placement for seniors was over 50 or over 55. The Older Workers Program mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. JTPA. I know Wrong Door Center in Oakland County serves older workers as part of the grant funding they have. And I'm sure that integrating them into the workforce is a real plus and a benefit for all of us. Oh, yeah. Really. yeah. It really is. And it's very helpful to see um, our seniors still wanting to move about. That's a you population know. we love to yeah, hire in our yeah. stores. Yeah. I mean, that's an ideal workforce for our retail stores, and we really appreciate them there. Yeah, very, very steady people. They enjoy Absolutely. what they do. and they Good role models. Right, and they like, to, they like they have the patience of Job, and yeah. they, they like to help everyone, you mm -hmm. know. They're very supportive to our disabled persons working next to them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And well, it's shows like this that we try to encourage um, our listening and viewing audience to call in or write us and let us know how they feel about the show. And, you know, also if they have questions about our guests on the show, uh, they can call or write us and ask us, you know, for your address or phone number. At the end of the show, we will definitely give the phone number again and address. Great. So if anyone wants to contact you in the future. And also, do you have any upcoming events that you want to tell us about, any fundraisers or social events that... I, I would imagine attend. the next big event for us will be the grand opening of our new facility mm -hmm. at Grand River in Trumbull, and we expect to be doing that in September. So um, if anyone's interested in seeing the new and remodeled Goodwill, then we'd love to hear from them. Okay. Now, Kathy, could you be so kind to give us that phone number again? And Yes. Uh, the number is 313-964-3900. You can call that number 24 hours a day and leave a message. If you call during the day and want to speak to me personally, I'm on extension 308, and I'd love to hear from you. Well, Kathy Crosby, that was well said. You're going to get some phone calls. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to thank you again for coming out to meet with us. And listen, anytime you want to come back to the show, you're more than welcome. We thank look forward to much. seeing you. It thank was you, great. Kathy. Thanks, thank Marsha. Okay. I'm Marsha Flores. I'm the host of Just Ask. And remember, if you know what's a, someone with a disability, don't be afraid to ask. Just ask. Thank you.
Funding for this program was provided by the Oakland County Cable Communications Corporation, or OC4. This program was made in cooperation with TC.